Well, hello there everyone, and it's Huey, and we're back for another Space Engineers video. This time, I'm doing something a bit different, and I'm show showcasing both a server I've been playing on, and uh, one of our creations. Well, many of our creations, actually. But uh, before I go any further, full disclaimer, I am not the server admin, um, because this one is based in London, and if you couldn't tell from my accent, I am not from... <laughs> either London or Europe or anywhere near there um, but um, it is run by a very very active uh, admin by the name of Dart and he's been a fantastic admin he's pretty new to the game I mean uh, well I'll say a couple of hundred hours at least but uh, he is a very fast learner and he's been uh, able to make this server run very very smoothly as you can see um, from all the stats there it's been running fantastically um, so, if you want to join, uh, it's the Galactic Services um, server, or Galactic Empires. Um, I will post links in the description below for all the relevant uh, mods and uh, IP, uh, um, the IP if you want to direct connect. And of course the Discord, which you will need to join, um, because the, they have uh, uh, faction, uh, was it, uh, faction roles, I think? Based on Star Wars, I think there's uh, Imperial and uh, Republic. So, yeah, I don't think I need to explain any more than that. We, of course, have gone Republic because uh, with my high ping, um, and I'm, of course, playing with my stepson, uh, with our high ping, we um, really aren't suited for combat unless it's PvE. So if you decide to come and, you know, want to uh, fight, then you're probably going to win, which is hence why we, we've got the safe zone. So good luck to you. With, the, with that advantage, you know, if you want to... Uh, exploit our high ping yeah hats off to you but anyway welcome to the CAC cosmic exchange this is a trading a trading uh, base set um, in the middle of nowhere um, and uh, of course I won't tell you exactly where but uh, if you decide to join the server and you play nice and you want to trade <coughs> I might give you the uh, the GPS um, and that, that has been done. I've given a few people the GPS and they, they've uh, wanted to come visit. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to wait until we've got, we had everything complete. And uh, here is the finished product. So as you can see, this is the front entrance. We've got a couple of drones uh, ready to go in case we need to defend ourselves. These are called the Tick Drones. Um, comes from an old design which I've reworked. and This is my design. Just wanted to put that out there. Um, and uh, yeah, it is called, of course using the new automatons blocks. So we've got four of these in total, um, two on each side. But I'll show you the other side of the base once we've gone through and had a look at everything. Um, and hopefully, uh, if if the the issue pops up, I can show you a workaround for the pressurization bug, especially with the new event event controllers uh, airlocks. So if we come into the front here. Oh, of course, I should, probably should throw you, I should throw you, show you uh, some of the defenses we've got. Um, so we've got uh, two Gatlings, an Assault Cannon Turret, and two Custom Auto Cannon Turrets. And these things absolutely shred stuff. I'm very impressed with how, how they've worked out. And as you can see here, I've put, uh, well, I haven't uh, put a gyroscope on that one. Did I put a gyroscope on this one? Where is it? There. Yeah, put a gyroscope on that one. I'll have to uh, add that to this one. I must have forgotten. Always handy to do that uh, as opposed to using inertia tensors. So, yeah, they they seem to function much better with, with gyros on them. But anyway, we come into the front entrance, and with the event controller, you'll need to um, close this front door, and it should pressurize, and then automatically open the second door. It's very dark in here, I know. Uh, it's not going to play ball. So, straight off the bat, I get to show you the workaround. So, if this happens to you, just place a hanger block. And it should pressurize. There you go. Done. Problem solved. Maybe. Or is it just taking a while? Uh, sometimes, oh, it just took a while. There we go. There, and it finally worked. 
That's literally it. I mean, this is a six-year-old bug that came still haven't fixed. Um, and with the, uh, the new event controllers, it seems to be even worse. So, air vents are a little bit broken still. But, uh, that aside, we are now in the front uh, area, the trade hub. And you, uh, you'll come in to an area where you can sit down, you can relax after your long journey. We can get straight into buying stuff from the store, which we have not set up yet. But we have set up some contracts on the contract block. So we're looking for plushies, animal meat, potatoes. Of course, that's another one of the mods that uh, Dara has enabled. Uh, the Daily Needs Survival Kit. Again, I'll put a full list in the description of the video. Um, and you can tell this is a trade hub because we're advertising Clean Cola and uh, Cosmic Coffee. I do have a vending machine here, but uh, given the nature of the PvPVE server, I've had to set the safe zone to whitelist, so Having things come out of the vending machine tends to fling them off into who knows where. So, but this is mainly for aesthetics, as is the ATM, because they're not really necessary, uh, especially with the store and contracts blocks. But I figured they look nice. But yeah, got some uh, cargo containers using the uh, the port covers here. And I think they look really, really cool. So, uh, really liking my neon tubes too. <laughs> and our uh, interior pillar lamps uh, to light things up a bit. This is probably one of the brightest rooms other than the medical area in the entire base. So, coming through to this section, we can go down the stairs and uh, we've got some nice posters up on the wall with uh, two half beam blocks running down the centre uh, because uh, I've made the stairwell an even number of blocks. It's, I know that's a big no-no, but uh, I don't. I think it actually turned out okay. But uh, we'll come down the stairwell. And I'll turn that off because the crosshair is annoying. And down, down, down. Lots of stairs. I was thinking of putting in lifts, but uh, I figured if I keep things as simple as possible, it should run better. <clears throat> so the first area we come into, I haven't got this. This is kind of a surprise. Well, it's not now, but anyway, this is going to be our plushie museum. So one of the reasons we want Sabroid and Engineer plushies is we want to be able to line these rotating displays uh, with plushies. And as you can see, there's one there. There he is. Hello. And I think it looks rather cool. It's uh, just, you know, one giant room that sort of splits off into others. And one of the rooms is, if you, um, after your long journey, you've had a bit of a rest, and you're thinking, what can I do while I'm here? Well, why not go for a swim? So you can come in here, and uh, there's our swimming pool, complete with diving board and pictures of various beaches and waterfronts using WIP's image converter. And... Uh, so if you do use WIP's image converter, <clears throat> you want to make sure you turn the brightness down. Otherwise, uh, they, these pictures can look really, really awful. I mean, they still don't look the best, but uh, they look a lot better with their, their brightness turned down by turning down the red, green, and blue down to 50 or lower, depending on your personal preference, of course couple more cargo containers. Now, I've put these everywhere throughout the base because it just made it easier to build everything. I did everything by hand, by the way, in this base, so yeah. Um, it was quite the experience. So coming down this area, we come to our first guest room. If you want to just rest up, have a shower um, before and after going for a swim in our swimming pool. And uh, guest room two, pretty much identical. As you can see, we come down. We've got some more directory signs, and uh, I think I've made good use of these interior blocks, especially with some of the new skins, the newer skins. So if we come down this way. This will take us into a transitional area, sort of. Oh, just. Too many stairs, so you like you gotta sit down and rest. Oh jeez. Alright, well let's go and move on to the next area. This one is restricted and 
will be restricted to non-faction members because this is our crew quarters. And uh, this is as a result of there being a rather large iron mine inside the Astro Base. So I mined all the iron away. It's completely gone. And I thought, what am I going to do with this giant hole I created? And I made a crew quarters. So we come in and we can see there are four beds um, and some more plushy uh, displays. So if you sleep, you, know, you lie down, you want to sleep and you want to feel all cozy and comfy. You've got plushies to keep you company and make you sleep better. And uh, we've got our lounge room. And of course, you'll know these um, LCD images from Splitsy's Assertive Acquisitions series. We do have Assert. Well, Da has Assert enabled. We did have Reavers, but they we found uh, along with a couple of other mods we've been testing, um, they did impact server performance, particularly with some of the really large builds that some players have been uh, putting together. So <clears throat> this base itself is not... Uh, in, in absolutely massive. I'll just quickly show you um, the block count. So the block count is uh, just under 10,000. PCU of 61,576. So not over the top, but I like it and so does Artsy. Come through to our bathroom, change room, and uh, more neon tubes to sort of give it that retro-ish effect. And uh, some of you might say, I oh, really don't dig those colours, but uh, that's kind of the point. I wanted things to stand out and, and be like, holy hell, like, what is this colour scheme? It's, it's, uh, it, it's meant to be a bit gaudy and old-fashioned kind of looking, like what, what people used to think sci-fi or the future would be like back in the 50s. So, yeah... <laughs> Um, so we come through into another transitional area and we've got uh, another restricted um, room and this comes through to our safe zone room and one of three of our um, gravity generators. And this again utilizing the daily need survival kit. We've got uh, some crop growers in this section. This is basically our, our indoor farm. So we've got pictures of nature and forests and stuff. And uh, another cargo container. Our hydroponics. And an area just for our, for all of our staff just to chill. If, they, if things are getting too stressful, they can just come down to this little garden and just like, ah, oh, nature. You may notice the theme of these pictures in this room is uh, Blue Mountains. So the Blue Mountains are an area um, in Australia in the, the Great Dividing Range, which incidentally, the Great Dividing Range uh, goes from Queensland all the way down to Victoria through New South Wales. If you know anything about our geography, or if you care, um, we've got some more assert. Yeah. Don't worry about that music cutting out; it does that. Speaking of music, you'll notice that uh, the default background music is not enabled. I've just turned that off completely because I've got a jukebox playing down in our bar and restaurant. To get to there, we go down all the way down these stairs here. A lot of stairs in this place, so <laughs> we've got a couple of bathrooms just outside the bar and restaurant. And if we come into here, you can tell it's a bar and restaurant because there's like milkshakes, pictures of milkshakes and food, and a disco ball. Maybe, maybe the space ball. Is it? Yeah, space ball. <clears throat> and here's our jukebox playing our music, and that is from uh, the Alien Isolation Sounds mod. Um, as you go through here, there's our uh, water recycler and food resequencer. Just a tip, uh, if you don't want the water recycler to steal all your ice, just turn it off while you don't need it. Um, yeah, you can like, serve some drinks and whatnot from this area. Making use of the neon tubes uh, once again. And uh, yeah, looks a bit gaudy, but that's, that's the entire point. Just uh, want to reiterate that. The medical room does look a bit more clean and, uh, you know, well, the idea was to make it look sterile and uh, I think I've done a pretty good job at that with the lighting and uh, these interior blocks. So, of course, we've got eight cryo chambers 
put some autopsy, autopsy tables down and of course if you uh, wanted to simulate you know role play getting out scalpels and various medical tools you can do that with these uh, storage containers and lockers we have an MRI some lab equipment and of course our medical room I put uh, some light panels up to sort of simulate uh, you know your x-ray lights um, just surrounding a cargo container with a uh, port access. And going down this way we've got uh, <clears throat> some more LCDs and uh, again the uh, half block beams just backed onto one another and then we've got uh, some hydrogen tanks on display. I thought I'd, I'd leave those to be visible because it kind of it does give it that industrial look. But if we go into this area this is our command center the first room you'll come to is like a briefing room, um, you know, with various uh, blueprints and graphs all around. And then you'll come through to this section. This is our main control room uh, with our automaton programmable blocks, some um, lockers, a, a gun cabinet, and of course another one of the mods. It's the Robo Factory. I do have some helpers wandering around here somewhere, I do believe, but. Um, yeah, you can, because uh, we played around with the nano, uh, nanite build and repair, that did cause too much of an impact, because people were building you know, eight of those things. So, uh, Da, correctly in my opinion, decided that he was going to get rid of it. But, can, this is the compromise. So, you can build yourself a repair bot, scavenger, combat, or crew. I've just built a couple of crew, because I don't really need the... Uh, the repair bots, as I said, did this all by hand myself. A little bit of help from Artsy, of course. But uh, these um, these helms have various controls on them. So if we oh, there's Bob. Bob's just wandering around. Anyway, um, so if we have a look here, we've got uh, the four custom turrets, and then we've got. Uh, we can unlock the drones and we can turn off the base turrets. So, pretty straightforward. These control seats up top here that are next to the windows have a few more controls. <clears throat> so, if uh, there's an enemy on scopes and uh, you want to alert people, we've got some uh, portable alerts there. And after a while, that gets a bit annoying, so you just turn it off. And of course, you can also control the hangar doors from here. And I've set up the event control a little bit differently uh, with this one for uh, reasons I'll show you in a moment. And then uh, you can close the hangar doors, release the drones, turn the antenna on and off, and of course, control the turrets and turn off the base turrets. And each of these uh, control seats are set up like that. So, Bob, why are you white? Why is your antenna white, I should say? What are you doing? I don't know, but he's still part of... I can still control him, so... And what you can do with the uh, these helpers, let's say I want Bob to man this station here. So I tell him to go over there. And he can just wander over. And there we go. And he just stays there for as long as he needs to, monitors a few things, and then he'll, he'll eventually go do something else. These are the timer blocks, the automaton timer blocks I use to set up these uh, audible warnings. And let's close that behind us. See you, Bob. Alright, so we go this way. Betty's wandering around there somewhere, doing something. <laughs> what is Betty doing? She's like. Oh my god, Betty. Stop letting out all the air, the oxygen. Anyway, we come into our operations area. It contains um, our turret controllers, event controllers, assemblers, and refineries. Our large reactor. Of course, we've got four small reactors as well. Hey, Betty. Can you just, like, I don't know. Yeah, hang out over here. And maintain that uh, she's because uh, I picked two engineers, so they will 
help with power efficiency and things like that. So you can set them to batteries and reactors and various other things. Betty. Oh my god, Betty. You know what? Just, uh... Man, the turrets. There you go. Fabricator. What the hell's it? Huh? Fabricator roll. Oh, I'm making ammo? I don't know. Anyway, so some of the scripts I've got running are the Izzy's inventory script and the LCDs too. So... I'm really digging that music. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really digging it. Uh, of course, we've got more warning signs, you know, we put our safety first. And there's explosive stuff in here, because we store our am ammunition in here, obviously, with the Izzy's inventory script. And, uh, of course, we've got to put our... We've got to do our due diligence, put up warning signs, because, you know, hydrogen tanks. And uh, let's head down further. So... Um, now, of course, because this is a restricted area, this ATM is mainly for faction members. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. This is like the first place you come into coming from the hangar. So, come to the hangar. This is the first of our uh, two mining ships. So, this is my design. This is the Manta Shrimp, a four drill battery powered um, three cargo container uh, mining ship. There's uh, warning lights if you wish to use them. If, uh, let's say you're mining somewhere and uh, you've got other players around you and you want to make sure they can see you and don't run into your drills, you can turn those on. This one's Artsy's design. It's a uh, two drill miner and he wanted to make that so he could get into sort of tighter areas. And i got to say, this is his first ship. His first ever ship he's designed himself and built himself. Way better than my first ship. It's, uh, it's quite sleek. So, Artsy, if you're watching, well done, mate. So, to activate the hangers... Oh, that's right. I wanted to show you why I've set these um, these up differently than you would a typical uh, event controller uh, controlled hanger. And that's because one of these is um, isolated from the rest of the grid. So, it's not conveyed in. It's just connected to two oxygen tanks, and that's so it doesn't you know, uh, malfunction or become useless when all your oxygen tanks are full. So, <clears throat> what I've done is to open the doors, is that you'll notice it says toggle block off. So that turns off the main, uh, the, the main vent that is plumbed into the rest of the base. And then once that's turned off, the other vent will depressurize. And you'll see, just in a moment, it closes that. Oh, and of course we've got alarms and lights set up too, which is part of the immersion. And you can see it's depressurizing. Looks like it's repressurizing, so I think they've got to do something with that uh, those particle effects. But it is what it is. And once it is completely depressurized... doors will open. And the alarm turns, uh, the audible alarm turns off. The lights stay on because I've got three of these. So two of these are here and there's one on the inside because I've left these doors on and that is to notify people on the inside that, the, hey, the hangar's open. Don't open these doors. <laughs> All right, so coming outside, we've got um, two modified curses. So we bought these in a, a previous private game that Artsy and I were playing and decided to modify them so that they were more useful in space. We are actually on the moon at the time and we thought, okay, so this hydrogen tank that's underneath this um, assault cannon it was way too exposed. Pretty much as they are, they're a glass cannon. Very powerful, very, very powerful um, in terms of firepower. But we did away with the rocket launcher and put another Gatling gun on. I think we added a Gatling gun on here, if memory serves. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, we've added three more Gatling guns. Um, and instead of the rocket launcher, we've got the assault cannon. Sorry. 
yeah, assault cannon. And uh, we've left the Gatling turret there. We've also put a couple of projectors on there because we couldn't figure out where else to put it. Looks a bit weird, but hey, if we need to do repair repairs, it works. And we've got uh, two uh, small reactors, and we've put a bunch of uh, bunch more batteries in as well, which are under these uh, heavy armor uh, panels. So we've got two of those, and then two more tick drones. And uh, so looking at the front, oh, sorry, not the front. This is the hangar, of course. This is uh, where the control room is, and we've got our antenna, some oxygen farms, some more custom turrets. And I've put some exhaust uh, pipes on there, which are spewing out like radioactive, radioactive-looking particles. Which looks really cool with those red spotlights. Um, so this is the uh, a modified B60 hauler uh, or B60 freighter um, that you can buy from any trader. And uh, so we bought that, and we thought, yeah, we're going to update pretty much everything that we can. So I will give you a quick guided tour of this one, because I don't think I've posted it in any uh, videos. We can go in through the back here. Not a proper airlock, but you know what, these... Oh, okay, it's going to auto-close for me. These ones uh, don't waste too much oxygen, so I'm fine with it. So we come down through the rear and uh, straight into the crew quarters. Any of you who've bought the B60 know that uh, these are very bland. I think they use passageways as beds and they've got like half walls as like a lounge. I think that's what it's supposed to be. But uh, yeah, I think this looks a lot better. This is Artsy's room when we go travelling. And uh, this will be this is my room. Very boring, <laughs> but uh, boring color at least. So if you come in through the side, um, it's a little bit different. We've still got the medical room, but we've got some uh, change rooms, another armory there, and the programmable block. I've just recolored. It's uh, didn't put the automaton one in because we use the uh, LCD scripts too. The bridge. Is very different. So we've got uh, four helms on each side, all with different. Um, wow. Okay. <laughs> all with different things. And what's this telling us? It says that something's damaged. Industrial hydrogen tank twelve. Okay. So we've got a uh, and. Welder 2. So one of our welders is slightly damaged, and we've got an uh, industrial hydrogen tank that's damaged. So, yeah, that's part of the LCD. So, I'll have to uh, scope that out. But, yeah, we've got uh, various monitoring scripts uh, running at the moment, which is handy, especially if uh, you've got multiple people on the ship. So, we can go out the side here. not realize we had a damaged uh, industrial hydrogen tank. That's uh, Anyway, so this is our solar array and of course we use the uh, turret controllers to control these and instead of using inertia tensors I've just stuck some gyroscopes on it. Seems to make them fairly stable and it does uh, reduce any impact on the server. And they work, they work fine, they produce plenty of power and as a tip for anyone who doesn't know, I only learned this uh, after 5,000 hours. I did not know this. And it was Artsy who pointed it out. If you put them back to back, you can see here... Uh, wait, this is probably a better example. You can see here... So I've got the immersive colours. So for me it's a bit hard to see because I am colourblind. You can see those are all green. If you go onto the other side, they are also all green. Little tip for those of you who want to get a bit, bit of extra power out of the solars. Um, so coming around here, of course, this is a ship you, uh, some of you who have watched my previous videos may recognise. This is the GM2-411, heavily modified, uh, Combat Destroyer Mark III. So, <clears throat> it's an old ship, but it checks out. Uh, this one sports four rail guns, six artillery cannons, and... Uh, one rocket launcher, a 
bunch of custom turrets, um, several uh, assault turrets, and we've got one custom Gatling, yeah, up the front here, and some artillery turrets, and a partridge in a pear tree. So, yeah. I won't go too much into this one. I mean, I have changed the thruster color. It's another mod that we've got enabled, the uh, colorable thrusters. Um, I will post um, a link to the video where I have gone over this ship. Um, so if you wish to go and see, check that out, uh, please do so. And uh, yeah, so we built this one for the server because I thought we kind of need a ship to go take on a cert. We could do it with the fighters, but I thought if we need something a bit beefier, we could use this one. And it is a nice ship. This is a modified version of uh, one of my blueprints, which I've got up at the moment. The blueprint that's up at the moment is the Grindmaster 9000. I just changed the, these to welders and made it the Weldmaster 9000. Over here, I've got uh, a conveyor sorter to basically uh, pull out all the components that uh, are in the base with Izzy's inventory manager that are being automatically made throw them into the ship it has uh, six large cargo containers and uh, so plenty to for all your building needs and um, yeah that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you uh, appreciated the uh, the effort that uh, mostly myself, but Artsy did help, um, have put into this base. And uh, hopefully, you know, you'll see this video and you'll think, huh, join a new server, give uh, one of the newer servers a, a bit of a run. Um, I have found it to run incredibly smoothly, even though I'm, uh, I'm quite a ways away from where the server is located. Um, I have had very little. Th very little issues. There have been some teething problems with working out which mods were, were good and which weren't. But um, I think uh, Dar has settled on a, a good range. So that's pretty much all from me. Um, be sure to pop by and, and say hello and uh, show Dar your support by showing that you, know, you appreciate all his work. And uh, don't forget, if you're not already subscribed, would help to hit that uh, subscribe and bell button and don't forget to hit the like but uh, that's all from me hope you enjoyed it and until next time take it easy everyone and bye for now pew, pew, pew.